The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others what you would have do to others what you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate that is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life. And those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Don't throw what is holy to the dogs. This is a calling to remind us of the great reverence that is required for the Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is the body and the blood and the soul and divinity of Jesus. And on this feast of St. Cyril of Alexandria, who helped to really promote um, the understanding of Mary as the mother of God, no one more cherished the presence of Christ than she did. And especially at the cross in the midst of the passion. And when we go to communion, that's what we're experiencing. We're experiencing the whole Christ and receiving him. We should be receiving him with care and devotion because we're receiving the whole of his passion. And so we stand with Our Lady at the cross and receive what he's giving us. And so we, we need to be careful that that Eucharist, that we are not the swine or the dogs, but we receive and cherish the Eucharist. We're tabernacles, not dogs. That's what we are. And we, in the preparatory prayers before the Eucharist, we say, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread that we offer. We have received this bread that we offer. So in other words, we've received from God. And what we receive then by our cherishing becomes the body, the blood, the soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. It becomes that among us because we're welcome to receiving it. Our reception doesn't make it happen. It happens and we receive what happens. But it begins with simple elements that are no longer simple elements because of the power of the Holy Spirit transforming these things into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. It will become our spiritual food. So we have to be careful how we cherish this. Jesus goes on to say, do to others what you would have them do to you. Well, if, if I'm a tabernacle and Christ lives in me, and you're a tabernacle and Christ lives in you, then if I don't cherish you like I cherish the Eucharist, then I'm also treating in you what is holy. I'm treating you like a dog, and I can't do that. And that's probably the most difficult part of Eucharistic reverence to treat one another with the reverence of Christ. Listen to what we say. It's, a, it's a, a, another, another prayer that we say, right? May the Lord accept this sacrifice 
at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. So may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. So you're saying to the priest, may the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands because this is going to become the Eucharist. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for our good and the good of all his holy church. So this is this gift of the Eucharist is for the holy church. That's the baptized. We are surely not the dogs or the swine, so we can't treat each other that way. Jesus goes on to say, enter through the narrow gate. While Jesus shepherds the flock, okay, while he shepherds the cl- flock and calls everyone to go along to the kingdom of God. He calls us all, and yet that gate is narrow because that gate is not a place where the herd can go through, but it's a place where an individual must walk through because it's your personal choice. It's your personal journey, and it's your personal heart that is given to Christ. And that must be decided upon by you, and you can't be pushed by anybody to do that. That narrow gate is because it's a free choice that I must make as an individual, and yet I do that in the church where other individuals build me up and help me, but yet they can't make that decision for me. We can bring our children to baptism, but at some point our children have to make decisions of their own. And although we might find our children to disappoint us when they hit their 20s, we need to pray hard because they need to make a decision on their own. And so we hope that they do. Each Eucharist, in a sense, begins with a walk through this narrow gate. We all walk down this aisle. And we had to do that personally. No one could make us walk down this aisle. Each of us walks down the aisle. Each of us personally comes to the front to receive the Eucharist. Nobody can receive it for you. Even if you bring communion to the sick, you can take it to them, but that person must receive it personally. It's something that we must do personally. That's that narrow gate. It's that personal encounter with the Word and a personal reception of the Eucharist. And all this is done with the attention of the heart. And so in my heart, I have to make this personal commitment to receiving Christ. And when my heart is so disposed, I'm not the swine or the dogs, but I'm someone who loves Christ and I'm accepting him in my personal life through the narrow gate, and I'm in that tabernacle that wants to graciously receive him and not treat him like pearls thrown to swine, but the one who is my Savior, to be always reverenced and cherished. Alleluia,